Alright folks, welcome to this exciting video where you once again join us in the wild landscape of Scotland and for this adventure we're joined by Scotland's number one DJ out here and for today's adventure we're away to head up this hill near Maniki because there's some cool interest in history there's an old Panmuir monument here but also there's an ROC bunker over here on the hill from the Cold War period Cold War nuclear observation bunker and another interesting thing from the World War II time period there's apparently the old location where the searchlights were for the anti-aircraft guns they had the searchlights a lot higher positioned on the land and they were actually up on this hill so in today's adventure we're away to head up here and ho hopefully document history that we've never seen before on the channel so let's get into this one Wow, this landscape, folks, it's incredible. And up ahead, we've sighted the massive monument. You can actually see it from quite far around up on the hill. And I've always wanted to come around here and see this thing. We did just have to come past like a house or whatever, but this track kind of makes its way along the land. And we've obviously picked the right direction now we can see it. But it's just honestly like a paradise. The landscape here is amazing. I can hear a power saw running up ahead though, so I'm not sure if there's somebody here getting some firewood or managing the land maybe but it is a Sunday today so it's unlikely estate workers would be around wow look at this folks at one time a massive gate must have hung on these posts and at one time Panmuir estate was one of the finest and the largest estates in Scotland and they used to own places like Glen Esk and areas like that and monuments like this just stand here on the land to tell a story of the history from that ancient time. Wow, it's so big. It's made of sandstone. Back in the 1600s and stuff, in the 1700s, estates like this were in their prime and they were thriving. But as the years progressed and moved on, they obviously dwindled. And often, like after the wars and stuff, that way of life was gone. But look at it, what an impressive structure. Almost looks a bit like Thunderbird 3. If any of my viewers used to watch the original Thunderbirds back in the day. Check it out, wow. Look, it's got a lightning conductor on the top. Yeah, let's take a walk around here. I can hear somebody strumming grass or whatever. Yeah, I can actually see the detail where they've been carving the stone. Yeah, we'll take a walk right around here first. What a crazy structure, folks. I always love bringing you history that we've never seen before. Something like this is no different. Hey, what an angle. Look at the detail of the carving up at the top. There used to be a big mansion, like a castle at Panmuir, but that was actually taken down back in the day, I think in the 60s or whatever. Or it, maybe it was even earlier days than that. But back at that time, I think it was one of those castles that the military actually came and destroyed because they were so well built that obviously a standard demolition team would often struggle. The military would use, like, would pretty much blow them up. And that was the same for some other castles like Ald Bar Castle and stuff back in the day. Yeah, wow, I'm so glad we've made it to the side of this. It's mad that this stuff's just in the landscape of Scotland. So check it out folks, as we make our way across the land, we're actually moving through these bushes now, onto the next part of this adventure. But hopefully we're heading towards the ROC bunker. Check this out here folks, on the forest floor there's a stone with a T. Wow, I wonder if that's an old boundary marker or something, maybe for an estate or... Something to do with the Panmuir monuments or the landscape. Which way do you reckon we need to go here? That's super overgrown, eh? We've come a wee bit further along this forest, folks, and we've now spied the ROC bunker. We're walking through this landscape, which at this time is full of ticks. I say it a lot in my videos, but the risks we are taking to get these adventures. It's mad at this time of year, trying to get to places like this. Look, this has been a wee quarry here at a certain time. Wow. What are you seeing? 
Yeah, the bunker's just over on this other little mound here, folks. I think if we go along here, then straight down. Channel, Channel DJ has just spotted a beaver down here, folks, but it could potentially be a rabbit. But you do get beavers in this landscape kicking about, like. I think, do we know just how to go to there and jump over? Check it out, folks. We're in the middle of this grassy meadow here. And on the mound of this piece of land, we can see the ROC bunker up ahead. The scenes are crazy once again this week on the video. And there's loads of flies and beasts flying about my head. So I'm just obviously making my way through here the best I can. Yeah, there's no really a route. Check it out folks, summertime jungle conditions. We've made it. And let's document this ROC bunker. An incredible piece of history here. Does it open? So with this one folks, we're just going to document the surface features and we're not going to force our way in because unless the lid's opening properly, we're not really wanting to go right in. It looks like there's ladders. So obviously the standard original ladders most likely know there. It's strange, it looks like the side's been busted out of that in, and I'm not sure how. That's the air vent which is at the other end of the bunker. And then this end here, the bathroom's at this corner here where I'm standing now. Sometimes on these there was like, uh, written on from the people that obviously made them, they used to score into the cement. See an interesting thing, all the, fe the features and fixtures have been stolen or taken from this one. Because even the mesh off the windows, look, you can see the different layers of ROC paint that's been on there over the years. Wow. What a spot. You can see how it's prominent on the land here, looking over the new biggin direction, over the laws, and then on to Dundee. And then down this side, you can kind of see the corner of Monty Faith, and then out onto the Tay estuary, which in some future videos soon, we'll be going out that way probably to explore some of the World War II history hidden within that area. But yeah, today it's some Cold War history and it's cool to document these. Over the years, we've stopped at so many of these on our adventures. It's cool today to come and see this and just tick another one off the list, see where it is and see what condition it's in. And yeah, it's interesting to see that as well. It's had another bracket on the top of the air vent. Yeah, the top of the cement is red. Oh wow, yeah, look, this one's had another bit here. I'm not sure if this was a master post or not. I don't think it was. But this has had some sort of big aerial here, maybe for some communications or whatever. And it's mad how all this cement is just busted out. Look, there's doing the air vent, folks. Oh, I look at this, folks. Oh, that's been what it is. That's one of the guy ropes that would have held the mast. So this was most likely a master post and it would have been kept open, one of the last bunkers until 1991. Yeah, it's so cool. I just love to see that detail. And that'll be how it's got this. It was maybe where the communications came in and a lot of the time the wires went down there. Here, yeah, that'll explain why this is all busted out. Somebody's actually pulled the wiring out of there and it's pulled all this with it. See that folks, we're uncovering the layers of history. I bet originally there would have been the copper wire going down there with all the insulation on it and all the communication wires and telecoms wires that were running into these sites. And then there should have been another little device of measure somewhere as well in the grass, like a wee pipe. Because they were measuring the radiation blast, like the height and the size of the blast, but also the fallout. They were taking measurements so like where the wind was going. And then they could gauge where the fallout would go. And then members of the public got the best idea of like a safe area. So they would have had their best kind of chance of surviving as a nation. And that's what these bunkers were basically for. There was 1,500 of them over the country, and then some of them closed in 1968, potentially because they realized they had too many to upkeep and maintain, and they didn't actually need that high level. 
So some of them got closed, but the ones that were left open were kept open until 1991, which is mad to think about. Like, that's no so long ago in history. These things were operational, and a crucial part of, like, the defensive system of Britain... Oh, I've heard like a bee or a wasp. There's just so many creatures at this time of year. And look, aye, the wee gate into the site is over here. Let's take a look at that. Still got the old ROC paint on the gate. Check it out, folks. Think about the old ROC. People that were stationed up here regularly, probably coming up through this gate to do their work. And with an angle like that, I just love to see it. The Cold War history has got a different character to the older, like, World War II history. Most of the World War II stuff around here doesn't have any of the paint or that left on it. And probably in a few years, these places wouldn't have the paint either. And they get more and more degraded and less and less of these exist. And the amount we've been able to document on the channel, it's so cool to see. And just to see what's left on the hill to tell that Cold War, War story of Britain. It's on with this adventure folks, it's just a madness, we're on this crazy adventure over the landscape, just exploring and documenting history. So we've made it over to this little track here folks, which is near the ROC bunker, and we can hear shooting down that road, so that's the reason we're not going to go over towards where the searchlights are, because there is signs saying like, to phone for permission to go further up, so we're not obviously wanting to push our luck. And Oh, there was a reason there'll be a sign there. We didn't want to get shot. You can't know what it's like on the channel, folks. We're all for the adventure, just seeing the abandoned history, but at this time of year, there's no point in going full send towards somebody that's shooting. All right, folks, this is now... We've just basically come off that hill. We didn't want to go further down that track because they we're shooting down that road. And actually, I didn't need to film an outro at the last location, and we've actually made our way now this is a sneak peek at where the next video is going to be held. We're way ahead a few miles along this coast. But this short video, looking at that Panmure monument and looking at the ROC bunker, we're going to end here, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye for me. Goodbye for the channel DJ. And we'll catch you very soon with the next scene, wherever we end up going, which is right here. This is literally where we're going in the next video, folks.